My name is Josh Callahan. I'm the Bahamas Program Director for Yellow Dog Fly Fishing, and today we're going to go over the packing list for the Bahamas. Uh, hopefully this gives you the tools that you need for your next trip to the islands. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the fly selection that you're going to need for your next trip to the Bahamas. You know, a lot of people kind of overthink this part of the trip and end up buying way more than they need. Um, generally speaking, we're going to keep bonefish patterns to different sizes of shrimp patterns. And that's going to be the vast majority of the flies that you need for any of these trips. Most of these patterns are going to be between a two and an eight. And we're going to use these at different times. You know, when if, we're, if you're in a boat, you're going to be fishing sometimes in some deeper water where some of those larger fish are. And you're going to want to use uh, more of a size two uh, or four. That's going to be, generally speaking, your average fly for the Bahamas. It's a little bit different than some of the other locations that have bonefish, where sometimes you're fishing more, you know, eights and tens. Generally speaking, we're going to want that little bit larger fly. Uh, you're going to have, some of these have a, the, the classic, B chain eyes that you see here. And this is gonna have, you know, a little bit slower fall, not gonna be quite as heavy as maybe going more of the dumbbell eyes. Um, whenever you see these dumbbell eyes, you know generally that you're gonna be fishing in that, you know, three feet, two to three feet of water, maybe sometimes even deeper. And again, for these different flies, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a couple of variations. You know, big popular choice for the Bahamas is going to be a spawning shrimp. This is very consistent on all of the islands, not just, you know, one specific area. You're going to actually look at this for most, you know, either Andros, Grand Bahama, Abaco, wherever you're going, you're going to want to make sure you have some of these in your arsenal. And it can be a little bit different. These are, you know, more of the crimp patterns or you know there's also the EP patterns that we have as well. Um, anything that's going to have a little bit of this orange for the spawning part of the shrimp is going to be very important to have. Another fly selection that you're going to need for the Bahamas is different types of crab patterns. This isn't always the case for bonefish but if there's going to be some shots at permit as well you're going to want to make sure that you have a few different options. Um, there's also some times where the bonefish get pretty spooky and you, if you can use a micro crab or a flexo crab that has a little less splash than coming from a wet shrimp pattern, that's going to give you a really good slow sink and a little bit less splash, a little bit less opportunity to spook those fish. So you want to make sure you have a few different sizes of these different crab patterns as well. Um, I'm a big fan of the, of the flexo crab as well as going with a more traditional, you know, raghead crab pattern. And so right here, these are really important to have in your fly selection. This is going to be something that gets either those spooky fish or gives you a shot at a trophy permit of a lifetime. It's also important to have a couple of tarpon flies and barracuda flies as well. You know, those are not often thought of as a reason to go to the Bahamas, but are a great opportunity to have that multi-species trip if you do get that shot for it. Generally speaking for tarpon, we're gonna want a little bit more darker colors here. And so more of this traditional black and purple. And so these are gonna be, you know, whenever you're fishing, um, around you know May through sometimes summertime through the Bahamas, you're going to have good shots on migratory tarpon. Uh, these particular patterns are going to be very important for getting some getting in front of those big fish. And you can see, I also try to go just in case, try to keep some lighter colors in there too, more of that chartreuse, white and chartreuse. And so. With this, you want to make sure that you have, again, different, a little bit of a variety. You don't need to take 24 of these, but if you have, you know, four to eight little tarpon uh, patterns, you should be really set for your trip. The next fly for the Bahamas, we're going to talk about the needlefish patterns for Barracuda. This can be some of the most exciting fishing that you have while you're down there. And it usually is kind of at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're running from one of the flats that you've already hit for bonefish, so you're not worried about spooking anything. And you see one of these 
toothy critters that could be up to 60 inches long, um, just kind of hovering. And you toss one of these out there, slow strip in until you see it really starting to get aggressive and then you can kind of speed it up and hold on for a fish of a lifetime. So whenever I'm fishing the Bahamas, I typically take two boxes with me. I'm gonna take my boat box that you're gonna see here that has a very organized look to it here with a variety of sizes from again, that twos all the way up until about an eight. Um, generally speaking, I keep my crab patterns separate and my, my shrimp patterns all in alignment. That way I know what size that I'm grabbing. Um, this is gonna stay in, in the boat, so you don't have to worry about you know, trying to lug this around in your backpack, but certainly make sure that you have your mainstays in here. I also take a smaller box that you'll see here as far as whenever I'm out waiting. I want to still have access to be able to switch my flies up, but I definitely bring the selection down a little bit compared to what I keep in the boat bag itself. Piggybacking off of our fly selection for the Bahamas, we also want to make sure that we have a good set of pliers. This is both, you know, to either crimp the barb but also as a line cutter and to be able to pop those hooks out of those fish really quickly as well. So it doesn't matter what brand that you're partial to. Uh, the ones that I carry have been Sims. They've always been, they do a great job. They have the, re the replaceable teeth as well. And they have the line cutter on here, which is I find very, very useful for while you're down on the flats, having that access to it. Um, it's also great to have a belt sheath that you can have on your hip. That way, whenever you are taking these hooks out of the fish, you can pop it out without worrying that you're gonna drop these somewhere and lose them forever.